Adventist Vegetarian Diabetics. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. The Author's Diabetes Journey Let no one think himself a criterion for all. That everyone must do exactly as he does. Ellen White, Councils on Health, page 156 Diagnosis I was diagnosed as a type 2 diabetic in September 2000 with an A1C of 7.7%. I was sent to consult with a diabetes educator and then was signed up for diabetes classes. I learned what the American Diabetes Association recommended for diet and exercise, and I was very compliant. I actually walked 30 minutes every weekday, during the first half of my lunch hour at work, and I restricted carbohydrates to 150 grams per day, as I was told to do, with three meals and one snack, most often at bedtime. I drank Diet Dr. Pepper instead of regular Dr. Pepper. Within the first year, I got my A1C down to below 7.0%. After 9-11, I had to change jobs and settle into a new routine. I figured out how I could walk every day at my new place of employment, but it was harder since the building was on a hill, requiring uphill and downhill walking not just nice flat city streets like my cushy dream job in the city had. On rainy days, I could walk inside for 30 minutes, up and down stairs, and back and forth in the long hallways where my office was located. I became attached to eating fresh green salads from the cafeteria salad bar. I checked my blood glucose three times a day, fasting, bedtime, and one random time during the day. Despite my efforts, though, my blood sugars started to rise, and eventually I was prescribed metformin and, later, glipizide. In the fall of 2004, I attended a three-day on-site Weimar Lifestyle Seminar for Diabetics, Reversing Diabetes. It was held in a beautiful venue in the Santa Cruz Mountains, where there was plenty of space for our daily 5-mile, 10,000 steps, walks. We had classes about diabetes, cooking demonstrations, and three meals a day of the most delicious food I could ever remember having tasted. However, I knew I could never make it work in my busy life of work, church, and parenting. It would have to wait until I was retired and had all day at home to cook everything from scratch and then walk five miles every day. So reversing diabetes was put on a back burner. Over the next eight years, Continuing an ADA-compliant diet with two diabetes oral medications, I just got fatter and sicker. In 2007, my A1C was up to 10.7%. I was prescribed intermediate-acting basal insulin injections. Twice a day. When I was up to 95 units a day, I asked my pharmacist what would happen if I needed over 100 units a day. Would I have to take two shots twice a day? No, he said, we would just need to give you bigger syringes. Bigger syringes? That was my wake-up call. It was time for me to get serious about reversing diabetes. Semi-retirement In 2012, I found myself unexpectedly in a semi-retirement status. I started with internet searches for reversing diabetes. I found reversing diabetes Facebook support groups but not from Weimar. Weimar's only internet and Facebook presence were marketing pages, advertising the 18-day residential Newstart lifestyle program costing thousands of dollars, claiming a 50% success rate for diabetics. They no longer offered the three-day seminars specifically for diabetics. I joined a few of the Facebook reversing diabetes groups and learned that their approach was the polar opposite of the Weimar Newstart method which I already knew was dietary vegan, with no counting of calories or carbohydrates. In fact, I had been amazed at the 2004 Weimar seminar that they did not give any credence to the ADA's limitation of 150 to 180 grams of net carbs per day. Eventually, Weimar started a Facebook group called New Start Insights, 
supposedly a support group for Weimar program alumni. I tried to ask questions but got little to no responses from even the 50% of successful diabetics. Eventually, Newstart Insights was deactivated. On Facebook, reversing diabetes meant low-carb high-fat, LCHF. I learned that the most successful people who actually did reverse diabetes to normal A1C levels, 4.0 to 5.6%, without insulin and or diabetes medications, did not eat grains or grain-based foods, breads, cakes, cookies, pies, pasta, rice, noodles, etc., legumes, starchy vegetables, and most fruits, except for a few berries. They limited total carbohydrates to 30 total grams per day. I learned about macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbohydrates, and that an LCHF diet typically has 5% carbohydrates, that is, carbs provide only 5% of the calories, 20% protein, and 75% fat. I learned about nutritional ketosis, the state of burning fat for energy instead of sugar, carbohydrates. I searched Amazon for books and found Dr. Richard K. Bernstein's Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, The Complete Guide to Achieving Normal Blood Sugars. Dr. Bernstein, a type 1 diabetic since age 12, kept his blood sugar at 83 mg per deciliter with a low-carb high-protein LCHP, approach, with an aggressive exercise regimen. Then I read two books by health blogger, Jimmy Moore, who lost 180 pounds in one year by eating a low-carb high-fat diet. He authored, with Dr. Eric Westman, Keto Clarity, Your Definitive Guide to the Benefits of a Low-Carb, High-Fat Diet and Cholesterol Clarity, What the HTL is Wrong with My Numbers? I began to collect low-carb recipes and try them out. Of course, these LCHF approaches were not vegan or vegetarian. That didn't bother me but the recipes with meat often featured unclean meat or seafood. So when I asked questions about recipes, it was just easier to say I was vegetarian than it was to explain why I ate beef but not pork, chicken but not duck, or salmon but not shrimp or catfish. And I learned about choosing grass-fed beef, cage-free pasture-raised chicken and eggs, and wild-caught fish instead of farmed fish. My next search was for low-carb vegetarian diabetic support groups. I even found a keto vegan group. One vegetarian group included pescatarians, so, of course, that included shrimp, crab, lobster, oysters, crayfish, and catfish. Unacceptable. Some of the truly vegetarian groups seemed to offer a lot of ethnic foods from Europe and Asia, using ingredients I was not familiar with. I also joined a few groups of blatantly high-carb, low- or no-fat dietary vegans. Their buzzword was WFPB, whole food plant-based, just to observe, if possible, if any diabetics had success with WFPB. Sadly, I encountered many who tried that way of eating only to find that bread, oatmeal, rice, pasta, and potatoes, of any color, spiked their blood sugar way out of control. Others had discovered that they had to significantly reduce the amount of starchy foods they could eat without high blood sugar spikes. Occasionally, there was an exceptional success story of a high-carb low-fat dietary vegan who had, after several months, been able to lower A1C to normal, 4.0 to 5.6%, without diabetes medications or insulin. But, more often, WFPB diabetics gave up and went back to eating meat. A new Facebook group. In June 2013, I found about 30 friends whom I knew were Adventist and diabetic and convinced them to join a new Facebook group I would call Adventist Vegetarian Diabetics. I knew they were the only ones who would understand that an Adventist non vegetarian meant those who ate only clean meat or seafood, as defined in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. They would know that Adventist pescatarians would eat only fish with scales and fins. I assumed that most of the group would be lacto-ovo-vegetarian. A few would be Adventist non-vegetarian and a few would be dietary vegans, just like it is in the mainstream Adventist culture. 
I identified as flexitarian, meaning a person who has a primarily vegetarian diet but occasionally eats meat or fish. It follows that Adventist flexitarian would mean one who occasionally eats clean meat or fish. Thus, Adventist vegetarian diabetics began as a Facebook group because of my frustration at not being able to find a reversing diabetes group that accommodated my unique dietary lifestyle. From the beginning, I promoted the eight laws of health, concepts that all serious Seventh-day Adventists were familiar with, and which I had taught, both in concept and practice, during the eleven and a half years that I homeschooled my children. Weimar Institute had popularized the acronym, New Start, before my children were born in the 1970s, trademarked New Start, 1986, and registered New Start, 1987 which is now used to identify their New Start lifestyle program. I researched how these concepts, nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in divine power, would have specific applications for diabetics. In 2014, our grown daughter, a lifelong vegetarian, moved in with us so she could complete her second degree on the college campus within driving distance of where we lived. And, with mom doing all the cooking, Lisa could focus on her studies. This became the perfect opportunity for me to try out new recipes for a vegetarian dietary lifestyle for diabetics. We had already been mostly whole foods for a few years by ordering weekly boxes of fresh produce from a local farm. We had huge salads every day, but we also had recipes with potatoes, rice, and pasta. By the end of 2014, my A1C had gone down to 7.0%, from 7.1%. But I had not lost any weight. Serious Low Carb Protocol I started seriously with a low carb dietary protocol in January 2015. The first month, I kept my daily carb quota under 100 grams a day. The second month, I limited daily carbs to under 50 grams, and by the third month, I was eating only 35 grams of total carbs a day and 30 grams net carbs. In those first three months, my average daily blood glucose went down from 146 to 126 milligrams per deciliter, and I lost 10 pounds. By the end of 2015, I had lost 22 pounds. But my A1C was still 6.9%. More people joined the Facebook group, Adventist Vegetarian Diabetics, many of whom I didn't know and some who had no idea who Seventh-day Adventists are. I was so passionate about eating low-carb high-fat, LCHF, excited about my success with it, that I'm afraid I alienated some members in those early days. They were usually ones who were following an ADA-compliant diet and were satisfied with their results so that they saw no need to change anything. I'm sure they viewed me as eccentric. As time went on, there were certain concepts that I had to correct in the group, such as gluten-free does not mean low-carb, sugar-free does not mean carb-free, and vegan is not the same as low-carb. It was Dr. Jason Fung, a Canadian nephrologist, who first explained that type 2 diabetes is a disease of hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin, and that whatever dietary approach helps to reduce the amount of insulin in the body, and thus reduce insulin resistance, is a valid approach for reversing diabetes, whether it is low-carb high-fat, LCHF, or high-carb low-fat, WFPB, and whether carnivore or vegan or something in between. However, because my two other admins and I experienced success with eating LCHF, low-carb high-fat, most posts and recipes supported that approach. After three years of eating low-carb high-fat as a flexitarian, I lost 42 pounds, went down two sizes in dresses, shirts, and pants, achieved a 5.9% A1C, raised my HDL, the good cholesterol, from 38 to 58 and lowered triglycerides from 245 to 123. At the five-year point, my HDL was 61 and triglycerides were 77. My Kaiser primary physician told us that the only significant numbers in a lipid panel, blood test for cholesterol, are, HDL, 
should be over 50, and triglycerides, should be under 100. My fasting blood glucose went down from 160 to 111 mg per deciliter. Some other significant factors in my early experience were discontinuing the statin drug, simvastatin, the sulfonylurea glipicide, because I didn't want to wear out the beta cells of my pancreas, and the generic metformin, because it gave me daily diarrhea. With my doctor's approval, I replaced metformin with the herbal supplement, berberine. I stopped taking two beta blockers, which had been prescribed for migraine preventives and weren't working anyway, and my daily average blood glucose dropped 15 to 20 mg per deciliter. Another pleasant surprise of eating low carb was that my thyroid function improved, and my doctors decreased the dosage of my levothyroxine medication. Twice. In my experience, N equals 1, as well as in my research and observations of other diabetics who have achieved success without prescription diabetes medications and or insulin, I found that they all have certain factors in common. They 1. Eliminate sugar, especially fructose, in all its forms. 2. Eat real food in as close to its natural state as possible, eliminating all or most processed foods, especially refined grain-based products and other starches. 3. Eliminate all industrial vegetable seed oils, canola, corn, cottonseed, grapeseed, safflower, soy, and sunflower oil. This includes all trans fats and hydrogenated fats, such as margarine and vegetable shortening. 4. Practice intermittent fasting with two meals a day. 5. Eat to your meter. 6. Engage in daily exercise, according to their personal levels of mobility. After 10 years, the other admins and I have come full circle, back to promoting a low-carb way of eating as the best way to achieve success in reversing diabetes. The easiest dietary lifestyles are Adventist non-vegetarian or lacto-ovo-vegetarian. We also support a dietary vegan lifestyle, as long as it is a low-carb keto and not a high-carb low-fat way of eating. Every diabetic must set their own standards of success and develop their own strategies to reach their desired outcomes. It is the mission of Adventist vegetarian diabetics to provide support, encouragement, affirmation, and information for all its members so they can achieve and maintain a state of normal blood sugar and normal insulin levels, with accompanying healthy levels of blood pressure, HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and other markers of physical health. My hope for you is to prove all things, hold fast that which is good, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21, KJV. Visit our website at AdventistVegetarianDiabetics.com. Follow our blog at AdventistVegetarianDiabetics.com slash blog posts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash at AdventistVegetarianDiabetics. Copyright by Adventist Vegetarian Diabetics. Mm -hmm.